On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, July 13th through 15th, at the University of Southern Maine's Department of Applied Medical Science, a group of K-12 teachers from Maine schools took part in a summer training program. The program is entitled Micro and Nanospace Exploration of Health and Disease. The goal of the program is to inspire elementary and middle school teachers to use microscopy to explore hidden worlds in their classroom. Dr. Monroe Du Bois, Associate Professor of Microbiology, described the program. This program uh, allows us to uh, bring in every summer uh, about 16 teachers of middle school and elementary schools um, to introduce teachers to, to uh, some of the concepts of microbiology and virology. I believe this is really important because the microscopic world is that these unseen worlds fascinate children and uh, op open the, the world of science to them. Victor Serio, coordinator of outreach and curriculum development, demonstrated how the training worked. Our workshop focuses primarily on microscopy uh, and how uh, microscopy can reveal the unseen world around us and how it affects human health and disease. You can see here uh, one of the microscopes, and these are microscopes that each teacher receives who, who, goes, who participates in the workshop. And uh, one of the great features of the microscope is it has a digital camera. And the digital camera allows us to hook into a computer and so that we can see uh, the images that, are, um, that we are able to see under the scope. And then we're able to take those images too, and the teachers are able to then uh, project those images onto a screen. And so you can see this is an image of human blood that is magnified 400 times. And so by being able to view the world in this way, it helps us understand more about uh, our, our own biology and the world around us and how uh, unseen and invisible, often invisible things, how they're invisible to the naked eye are very important in terms of maintaining human health. Nancy Sarah, a teacher at the Longfellow School, spoke about the results of the program. I'm taking this course this year um, on nanoscience and bacteria and disease because I thought it was a, just a great way to bring biology into the classroom. Lori Flower from Stockbridge, Massachusetts, is a technology integration coordinator. I come here for three weeks every summer to help Maine middle school teachers integrate microscopes into their curriculum. It allows for uh, better teaching and better opportunities for the students in our classrooms. Ian McLean from Deering High School was a returning teacher. My primary focus was to get one of these really sweet digital microscopes to use in class. Uh, because I do use the scope quite a bit, and I have students who get to use them too, and so it's a nice way to kind of preview what they're going to see in class, and the camera feature is huge to me. Ed Wynn, a Mount View Middle School teacher, illustrated some experiments. Today we have some, uh, hopefully we have some tardigrades on the substrate. The substrate is one we've taken from some rocks, we've scraped the moss off, and then we, uh, we put a little water in here, kind of get the tardigrades to come out and play. They're actually known as water bears. I have something on my screen that I think will show you what we're looking at in the, for the tardigrades over here. A uh, picture we I took the other day. They're kind of neat little critters. And uh, we'd never see this unless we had some great microscopes and some uh, ability to look into this little unseen world that we're finding out about. Gail Fletcher, coordinator of the Science Education Partnership Award at the university and Professor Emerita, Western New England College, assisted with the program. Our particular focus is on microscopy, where um, teachers come in for this two-week two -week session. We go through uh, getting them familiar with the ideas about microbiology, and then also teaching them how to use the microscope that they will take back to their school. Jefferson Gaynor, a research fellow, demonstrated the power of the laboratory microscope. And what we have here is a scanning electron microscope, and it's able to magnify a sample up to 10,000 times. This is an image of a dog tick. So this summer we are uh, working with um, uh, one of the topics we're using is Lyme disease. So we're using a little bit of tick biology to help illustrate that. The next image we have here is a, a more zoomed in or close-up shot. And this is actually the underside of the tick's mouth parts. The final image is a close-up here of about 800 times and this, is, uh, this claw structure is what you see at the end of a tick's foot. Okay? I'd also like to add that the uh, acquisition of this scope was made possible through a Science Education Partnership Award grant made available through the 
National Center for Research Resources, and the National Institutes of Health. On the campus of the University of Southern Maine, reporting for a community update, this is Steve Horochek. Our Exchange Portland will open its doors to the public at its new location, sharing space with Community Television Network, Channel 5, on August 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. Also on this night, Our Exchange Portland will feature a photography exhibit and sale by Don Herrick at the Time Gallery, 516 Congress Street, right here. The open house and exhibit are held in conjunction with the First Friday Art Walk. This event is free and open to the public. That's it for this edition of Community Update. I'm Tom Handel. And I'm Beth Allen. Be sure to join us every week for a new show on your local community television station in WMPG Radio.